Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Remington Rand, makers of the Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, present What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the charming young humorist who is seen on his own comedy show at 11.20 every evening on television, Monday through Friday, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television, the uh, girl with the hit notices in her new Broadway play, Late Love, Arlene Francis. <laughs> and on my left, a dear fellow who has just returned from exploring and lecturing in towns like Anderson, Indiana, and Hiram, Ohio. How are you? <laughs> dear Bennett Surf. <laughs> Thank you, Arlene. I must say the folks out that way certainly like What's My Line, and we appreciate it very much. And they think our panel moderator is simply adorable. So uh, <laughs> here he is, ladies and gentlemen, adorable John Daly. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice to hear, but I got two growing sons. Take it easy. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we're going to put our cameras close up on some people who been nice enough to come and visit us and bring with them some very interesting occupations. We trust that the occupations will give you a lot of fun and the panel a lot of trouble so they can carry home some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program, but now let's get things underway and let's make the experts figure out just exactly what our first challenger's job is. Will you sign in, please, sir? Charles? Meshek. Frost. <laughs> you got any brothers named Abednego, etc.? No. I you haven't? I have a son named Jack. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Good for you. Uh, would you be good enough to tell us where you're from? from? North Carolina. Oh, well, it's nice to have somebody here from the South with us, sir. Uh, we've got some people over there that would like to get to know you a bit better because they have to figure out some things about you. So will you walk down in front of the panel, please? Take hands. I beat you to it. I know, but I get the second one. Oh, firm, man. He's a strong one from North Carolina. All right, Mr. Frost, will you come over here now, please, and sit down right next to me? And I think um, you probably know that what happens now is that the panel gets a chance to figure out what it is without asking any questions. They get one free guess. And we'll begin the free guesses, as always, with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a football coach. Football coach, Mr. Allen. I think he specializes in haircuts for the Remington Electric Shaver. Miss <laughs> Francis. I think he's a professor of political economy. Mr. Sir. I think he teaches judo down at Chapel Hill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Charles Meshek Frost. And at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. Across the panel's going to have to dig. The rules are very simple. Every time you can give them a good, big, loud no answer, it'll cost them $5. We keep a record of all that right up here. Ten of these no's, and you've won the game. All right, Mr. Frost is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Frost, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Is it uh, something that I might possibly use? Yes. You could. <laughs> And that fact amuses you, does it, John? <laughs> Could this then also be used by women? Yes. <laughs> if Arlene, just to pick a name out of a hat. I am not a name in a hat. <laughs> if Arlene Stetson were uh, using this right now, could we tell it? Yes. Would it uh, possibly make her more attractive in any way? Would depend, I guess, on who the person was, wouldn't you think so? Uh, would it make her more attractive in any way? I would think we would have to say uh, no to that, don't you, Mr. Frost? I think not, Steve. You may disagree with me later, but I'm going to give you a no on that. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. 
Is this product anything that can be held in the hand? Yes. Is it anything that can be put in the mouth? Yes. Uh, is it anything that is made of tobacco? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, <laughs> Is it anything you keep in your mouth rather than, uh, uh, smoke? Let's, I mean, something you chew on rather than smoke? Yes. And if I wouldn't look attractive, the only reason I thought of that is you said I wouldn't look so attractive. You've never seen me chew tobacco on the dream. <laughs> Plug right out back. I'll be glad to give you a chance to show it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Mr. Bill will try it too. <laughs> Mr. Frost has, is associated with chewing tobacco. With chewing it's tobacco. a small technicality. What is his relationship to it? Well, does he grow it? Does he grow it? No, you don't no. grow it. That makes it two dollar eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I would think he's connected with the company that processes it and sells it. Uh, Frost, I guess we'd have to accept that, wouldn't we? That's right. Actually, yes. Mr. Frost has uh, got quite a brand there. It's called Bloodhound Chewing Tobacco, and he makes it, helps to make it. Why, Arlene uses it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, why I can always track down my man. <laughs> well, Mr. Frost, uh, got a relatively small prize, but we hope you enjoyed your visit because we had a lot of fun. It was nice of you to come and visit us. So good night. Panel, a very good beginning. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Ray Jones. Where are you from, sir? Maplewood, New Jersey. Maplewood, New Jersey. Well, uh, there's some people over there who feel that they ought to know a little bit more about you. So would you go over and see them, please? Jones? Hello, Mr. Jones. Howdy. Aren't you going to look at All my right. hands, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. He Jones, will you come over here now and join me, please? And at uh, this point, the panel gets its usual free guess before we get right down to hard text. On the basis of a very brief acquaintance, we'll see what they can do. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he manages a racetrack. Manages a racetrack. Mr. Allen. I think he tracks down managers. <laughs> Miss Francis. What was that? I think he makes bunting and flags for parades. Mr. Surf. Mr. Jones has a kind face. I think he's a pain teller at a bank. A pain teller <laughs> at a bank. No, I'm afraid not. Let our viewers have another look at Mr. Ray Jones. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> the panel has to dig. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jones, I think you know the rules. Every time you get a no, we flip a card. When I flip ten cards, the record being kept up here, you're in clover. All right, Mr. Jones is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Sir. Mr. Jones, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it a product with, with which I might have come in contact? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Well, it would be normal for me to, to use this product, would it? Yeah. I guess so. It will. <laughs> well, does it come in contact with the body? Yes. Uh, I take it it's nothing I or, or Steve would wear, is that correct? No. We would not yes, wear it. Yes, it is correct that you would not wear it, no. Would it, uh, <laughs> would it be more likely for, uh, let's say, Dorothy to use this product than either Steve or myself? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can have some fun with this job. Uh, actually, that's very hard to tell. Bennett, uh, it's possible that they might. On the other hand, they might not, you know? In other words, any one of the four of us might use this product. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if the product showed on this program, w would the people out there laugh? <laughs> if it showed on this program, I think they might yes. laugh. Yes, yes. Uh, well, has, have any of us, has any one of the four of us ever used this product on this, on this show. <laughs> no, I don't no. think so, Bennett, no. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then this is also something that even a lady would not wear. No. Yes, this is something a lady would not wear, no. This is something that you would uh, be more likely to say was used, is that it? It's a useful product? Yes. Is it something that's used in the home? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
in our well-known two-story house, would it be used on an upper floor rather than on a lower floor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, does it have anything to do with improving the appearance or cleanliness of a person? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would it be anything that you would use in a bathroom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, did Bennett uh, say that it came in contact with the body? Yes, I believe yes. it is. Wow. Is it anything that you that would be involved in bathing? Would it be involved in bathing? Yes, yes. it would be involved in bathing. Uh, <laughs> is it uh, larger than a bird bath? <laughs> larger than a bird bath. How big is a bird bath? Yeah, I guess oh, it's larger terribly. than a bird bag. Yes. Yeah. yes. Are you pulling my leg, John? <laughs> Not from this distance, darling. <laughs> well, is it quite a bit larger than a bird bath? Mm. How large is a bird bath? It's about like this. That's yeah, I'd say it's larger than that. Bird. Good deal. Yes. Yeah. Um, is it large enough for a human being to get into? Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, is it as large as a people bath? <laughs> what bath? People. Is it as people large bath? as a people bath? Yes, I yes. think it's as large as that. Well, is it a form of bathtub? Yes, yes. Well, does Mr. Jones have something to do with bathtubs? Yes, he yes. has something to do with bathtubs. Now, you find out what he has to do does with bathtubs. Does he bath either make or sell them? Make? Does he either make or sell them? Yes, he either makes or sells them. <laughs> well, all right, I'll take the wrong guess. Uh, he sells them. He sells them? That's right. <laughs> Bathtub, isn't it? That's right. Sell a lot of them? A lot of them. Well, even if you sell a lot of them, I don't like to see so few cards. So we'll flip a couple more cards just for good Thank fun. You. And Thank hope you. you had good fun. Nice to have you as our guest in What's My Line, sir. Good night. <laughs> and now, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. But first... Forget everything you ever heard about electric shavers. Here's a shaver that makes all other shaving old-fashioned, the Remington 60 Deluxe. Watch it in a demonstration no other shaving instrument has ever dared attempt. Here is a 60-second clock and a man who hasn't shaved for two weeks. He's going to remove that tough beard in exactly 60 seconds with the Remington 60 Deluxe. You're seeing it from beginning to end. Watch that Remington clean off those whiskers. Faster than a razor. Faster than any other shaver. That's because it's a six-headed shaver. It has 140% more live shaving surface, almost three times as much shaving area as the old-fashioned type of electric shaver with only one or two small heads. And as you can see, the Remington 60 Deluxe can shave every place on your face. It won't miss a hair the way small one- or two-headed shavers can. Fifteen seconds to go. When this shave is over, that Remington 60 Deluxe will have made 24 million cutting operations in one minute. And there goes the clock. 58, 59, 60. There's proof of the amazing speed of the Remington. For proof of the quick, clean shave that the Remington will give you, pick one up on the 14-day free trial plan at your favorite store or Remington Rand Shaving Headquarters. If you have an old-fashioned electric shaver with one or two small heads, it's worth a $7.50 trade-in allowance. For the shave you've always wanted, reach for the Remington. Get a Remington 60 Deluxe. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel would recognize our guest immediately, so they have, as usual, been provided with blindfolds of the Blindfolds All-In-Place panel. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? No, 
in the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with all usual preliminaries and get right down to the general questioning. I would tell you that our guest's voice is, I think, so well known that I'm going to answer the first few questions, perhaps the first round's questions. But um, let's get right down to cases and begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you accustomed to facing crowds? Yes. <laughs> what a crowd. That's you, John. That's me. <laughs> You mean it was uh, not recognizable, Bennett? <laughs> yes, it was a dog. Well, uh, are we to gather that this person's voice is even more famous than that of, say, a famous motion picture star? Yes. Well, you know, I, all things are relative in this relative world of ours. I would say that our guest's voice is most famous, and we would leave the comparative to the decision of uh, that individual who chose to pose the question. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely. Um, is, is this person, was, would I be likely to recognize this person's voice if it was heard on the radio? Would you be likely to recognize this person's voice if it was heard on the radio? I would think you might, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is our guest a public figure rather than an actor or actress? A public figure rather than an actor or actress? Uh, yes, I would think so. Uh, does our guest appear regularly on television? Does our guest, by which you mean on a regular weekly program? No, but quite frequently. Well, I would think that um, quite frequently uh, would not be exactly correct. Would you? Uh, no, Good, I'm, I'm glad to, to give you a no. There. I'm sorry, Dorothy. I, I think you hung yourself up, but I will have to let that one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. He appears on television, but not too frequently, is that it? That's about it. We're both in the same boat then, so is he. <laughs> is he in the, uh, does he operate in the political arena in any Does way? he operate in the political arena? Uh -huh. uh, I would say that you get a no there because it's not a he. That makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Oh, are you intimating then that it is a lady that sometimes operates in a political arena? I'm not meaning to intimate anything. If you would like to ask that specific question, we'd be glad to entertain it. <laughs> Have you ever been associated with politics? Have you now? Are you now or have you ever been associated with politics? I would think that the answer to that would have to be uh, yes. Thank you. Since you used associated. <laughs> oh. But that is also to advise you that in one way or another, almost every good citizen of this country is associated oh. with politics. <laughs> We will now say, I pledge allegiance in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you uh, uh, in Washington? Right now, now? Of course, you understand. <laughs> but is your main job one that keeps you in Washington most of the time? Is your main job one that keeps you in Washington most of the time? I would say no to that, with our guest permission. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Surf. Well, would our distinguished guest be found in the uh, vicinity ever of the United Nations set up? In the vicinity of the United Nations? Uh, well, I would think probably we might find our guest in the vicinity of the United Nations, yes. Now, knowing your very tricky and sly ways, John, uh, uh, you talked about a citizen of this country. Uh, I don't think that this may necessarily be a citizen of this country. We would be uh, is, it, is this lady a citizen? Is it, I'm going to put it is, it, is it true that this lady is not a citizen of the United States? Is it true that this lady is not a citizen of the United States? That would make it four down and six to go. I got it figured out. All right, Miss Kilgallen. I dislike asking a lady about a birthday, but has our guest recently had a birthday that was celebrated by a great many friends? Well, I'm now going to ask our guest if uh, she will to answer the question herself. Have you recently had a birthday that was celebrated? Uh, has our guest, is our guest ever found in the vicinity of Hyde Park, New York? <laughs> is our guest ever found in the vicinity of Hyde Park, New York? And almost every other vicinity you can think of. <laughs> Not often. No? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think once in a while, Miss Dorothy. Oh, you mean I'm still on? Yes, you're still on. Uh, is our guest famous for traveling? Is our guest famous for traveling? Yes. Is she also a newspaper columnist? Yes. Uh, did she ever occupy the White House? Yes. <laughs> is it Mrs. Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Mrs. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And I must say that um, perhaps particularly tonight, Bennett, you touched on a very tender and fun spot when you mentioned I, the I United Nations. I thought you were being Madame Pandit. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight, I think uh, everybody knows, begins the eighth annual observance of United Nations Week. Uh, it needs no one, least of all me, to tell uh, the great part that our guest has played in the development of the United Nations. And we're very pleased and proud, Mrs. Roosevelt, to have you as our guest. I think perhaps, too, that you could describe better than anyone, uh, just what the uh, purpose of United Nations Week is. Well, United Nations Week, of course, is, uh, I think, rather an American uh, undertaking. The American Association for the United Nations started United Nations Week as preparation for United Nations Day, which is an international day. Practically, as many countries as are members try to commemorate United Nations Day. But we in this country try to prepare during the week beforehand so as to spread more information and understanding about what the day really means. And that is the week that we're beginning tonight. <coughs> that is the week we're beginning tonight. Well, I think to uh, get that week off to a good start, you're the best spokesman that any one could possibly hope to have. And here, here. Thank more you. than that. <laughs> This is, a, this is a banner day for What's My Line. We will always remember very fondly that you honored us by being our mystery guest, and I'm sure that the panel would love very much to shake your hand. Thank Say good you night. Very Thank much. you, Mrs. Rosen. Now, just a very quick reminder while our next challenger gets ready to come in that if you would like to appear on What's My Line and try to puzzle our perspicacious panel with your occupation, simply send us a picture, a small snapshot that you can spare because we can't send it back. Your name, your address, your occupation, and when you expect to be in New York. And send all of this information, not to me, because that delays it. Send it to What's My Line, CBS TV, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. And now let's see what another challenger can do. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Edith. Edith Hempstead, is that right? I'm from Belrose, Long Island. Belrose, Long Island? Yes. And is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Hempstead, yes. would you uh, take a very quick walk down to the panel and back since time is fleeing on us tonight? All right, Mrs. Hempstead, if you'll join me here now, the panel gets its free guess, and we'll see how well they can do about figuring out what Mrs. Hempstead from Belrose, Long Island does. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a travel agent. A travel agent, Mr. Allen. She runs a modeling agency. A modeling agency, Miss Francis. I think she's some lucky employer's beautiful secretary. <laughs> Mr. Surf? I think she writes a column for Newsday. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Hempstead. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Hempstead, the panel has to work, but uh, it's very easy for you. All you have to do is give them no answers. Every time you give them no answer, I'll flip a card. We keep a record here, 10 no's and you've won. Mrs. Hempstead is salaried with that We'll begin the general questioning with Miss Francis, and we have under three minutes to go. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Hempstead? Yes, I do. Do you have to have a uh, training for your job? Yes. Do you have to have a uh, formal education for your job? Yes. Uh, 
Formal education by which we always mean a college degree. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, so with your permission, we'll flip the lid. That'll make it one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Daly. It's all right. <laughs> you perform a service of some kind? Yes, I do. Uh, is this a service that is uh, given indiscriminately to both sexes? Well, we don't like the word indiscriminate. <laughs> uh, that is simply meant just as likely to be done to the male sex as the female sex. Yes. Uh, does the age of the uh, subject make any difference, whatever, to you? No. Uh, one more. We've got to have a conference. <laughs> uh, I knew well, he'd get around to that. Well, wasn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> seen from here to eternity. <laughs> Come back, John. Actually, we don't want to confuse you. I will say this, Bennett. You brought a relationship between the service that is rendered and uh, the age of one who put it to use or received it. Uh, we would say that there is a possibility there that there might be some effect. So you go on. Well, Mrs. Hampstead, do you teach something? No. Teach something? That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, are people better off because of what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Who dares to say no? Go ahead, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you deal with grown-ups rather than with children? Yes, I do. Then perhaps the relevancy of age is involved with a minimum age that people have to be in order to enjoy your services. Yes, I would say that was true. It has a bearing, but not necessarily a specific one. Uh, do people ever come more than one at a time? I mean, in pairs to see you? Yes. She knows a family got six kids. <laughs> come seven or eight at a time with people, you know? And you come in direct contact with the people? You talk to them? Yes. Is there any filling out of forms necessary in your work? You're speaking of formed writing. Uh, yes, I realize she fills uh, hers out very much. Actually, nice. Dorothy, <laughs> time is up, so we're going to have to flip it all. You love this. This will be loaded for you all. Mrs. Hempstead writes television commercials <laughs> and gets the full prize. Thanks for being our guest. Where would you be without it? Well, we'll be back in just a minute, but first, here is something to remember. Throughout the world, more people buy Remington shavers than any other make. So why don't you reach for the Remington? The Remington 60 Deluxe. It has 140% more live shaving surface than the old-fashioned type of electric shaver. That's almost three times as much shaving area. For the shave you've always wanted, reach for the Remington. Get a Remington 60 Deluxe, a product of Remington Rand. Famous, too, for Remington typewriters. And the finest in business machines. And be sure and tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again, we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. Good night, boys. Ooh. And good night, <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> I don't like to be separated from the boys. Good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Be with us again next week when Jules Montagnier Incorporated, makers of Stop It, America's leading spray deodorant, and Finesse, the new flowing cream shampoo, brings you What's my line. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. This is Lee Vine speaking. Don Hollenbeck reports Sundays on the CBS television.